Hey everyone, it's Shiloh Carosa, author of The Exile and The Misadventures of Melvin the Missing Sock. Happy National Reading Month! I hope you're diving into some great books so far this March, and I just wanted to take a minute and share with you my very own The Misadventures of Melvin the Missing Sock. So without further ado, here's Melvin. Meet Melvin. Melvin was a plain white sock who lived in the master's dresser. Melvin and his twin Marvin shared the drawer with many other kinds of socks. Black socks, red socks, spotted socks, striped socks, ankle socks, high socks, toe socks. Every kind of sock, you name it, and the master had it. Melvin and Marvin lived a simple life, as most socks do. They were worn every Monday, they were thrown into the hamper, they went through the wash, they tumbled in the dryer, until finally they were folded and put back in the drawer. It was just about what any sock could expect, but Melvin was malcontent. He did not like the way he was, for the truth is, as far as socks go, Melvin was a most modest sock. He was a size medium sock. He was a mid-rise sock. He lived in the middle drawer. He was worn with moderate frequency. Nothing about Melvin's life made him feel special, Instead, it made him feel mediocre. One day, his patience finally wore thin. I'd rather be a missing sock than a mediocre sock, he moaned. The entire drawer gasped. Do you know what happens to socks who go missing? Asked a threadbare sage sock from the corner of the drawer. Melvin prepared himself for the worst. No, what does happen to them? The sock looked at him grimly. No one knows. No sock that leaves the safety of the drawer has ever been found again. Beware the unknown, Melvin, for if you go missing, you may never return. But the other young socks urged Melvin on. Don't let that stop you. Think outside the drawer. Melvin was moved by their words, but the sage sock's warning made him think twice. Perhaps it was too dangerous to go missing, but if he stayed here, he would forever be a plain white sock. Melvin couldn't quite make up his mind. The next Monday, the master wore Melvin and Marvin as usual, but instead of putting them in the hamper that evening, he left them on the floor while he watched a baseball game on TV. While Marvin snoozed on the floor next to him, Melvin noticed something magnificent. One of the teams in the game was called the White Sox, just like him. For once, Melvin felt confident that he too could be something marvelous. If those socks can become famous, so can I, he thought. Melvin waited until the master fell asleep and then began inching along the floor. Nothing was going to stop him now. Melvin would show everyone in the drawer how special he could be. But just then, Melvin felt warm, wet jaws scoop him up. The dog had caught him. Melvin's cries of alarm were muffled by the dog's mouth as it carried him across the room, across the kitchen, and into the dog bed. When it had finished mauling poor Melvin, the dog went to sleep. As he lay in the dog bed, Melvin noticed two holes in his fabric. Now he was a mangled sock. But what did he care? He wasn't going to be worn again anyway. He was going to do something far more exciting, and nothing was going to stop him. Once the house grew quiet that night, Melvin slipped out of the dog bed and slinked along the floor. At last, he came to the door. And look! There was the shoe rack. Melvin tucked himself into one of the master's shoes for the night, glad for a cozy place to sleep, even if it did smell a little funny. Once the door opened in the morning, he could sneak out and leave behind the house altogether. When morning came, Melvin heard the children's voices as they got ready for school. He peeked over the rim of the shoe, waiting for them to open the door, waiting for his chance. But suddenly, one of the children pulled Melvin out of the shoe, stuffed him into a pocket, and left the house. Melvin managed to wriggle into a position so he could see out of the pocket as they rode the bus. I've never been to school before, he thought. This will be an adventure. When the children clambered off the bus, Melvin soon found himself in a classroom full of familiar objects. Glue sticks, scissors, crayons, paintbrushes. Did everyone remember to bring a plain sock for today? The teacher asked. A hand reached into the pocket and pulled Melvin out, laying him on the table. A plain sock, he thought ruefully. 
I won't be plain for very long. He turned to a shabby tan sock lying on the table next to him. Psst, Melvin whispered. What are they going to do with us? The sock suppressed a shiver. They're going to turn us into puppets, he said. Puppets. Now this was getting exciting. Suddenly, Melvin felt something hot and sticky press onto him in two places, followed by two googly eyes. Next, the glue pressed onto his toe, followed by a tuft of fuzz. He was a new creation. When the glue dried, the children all slipped the socks onto their hands and began playing with them, pretending the socks were people. Melvin couldn't understand why the other socks didn't like being puppets. Sure, they were upside down, and sure, they weren't saying any of the silly things the children pretended. But for once, they were the center of attention. They were the reason for all the excitement. Finally, Melvin didn't feel so mediocre. But after the game was over, Melvin was stuffed back in the pocket. When the children came home, a grubby hand pulled him out and tossed him under a bed, where no one saw him for the rest of the day, or the next day, or the next day. Melvin lay there for a long time, moping over his misfortune. He had left the drawer to do great things, but the glory was so short-lived. One minute he was a puppet, and the next he was a plain white sock with holes and googly eyes and hair in the wrong places. What good am I now? Melvin wondered. Worse than feeling mediocre, he now felt meaningless. One day he heard the vacuum cleaner coming, a low, terrible rumble that shook the floor beneath him. But he didn't even bother to slink away. Suddenly, Melvin was caught in the suction of the vacuum. Its teeth pulled him further and further into the hungry mouth to devour him. When he was almost entirely swallowed, Melvin heard the vacuum turn off, and the growling stopped. The mistress tugged him out of the vacuum's mouth and held him up quizzically. Well, I suppose I could use another dusting rag, she said. Removing the googly eyes and the tuft of hair, she slipped Melvin over her hand and began dusting the furniture. By the time she finished, Melvin was filthy. At last, the mistress peeled him off and tossed him into the hamper. Melvin was glad to be laundered again, but when he landed on the couch, he realized something. Marvin was nowhere to be found. Soon, all of the other clothes had been folded, except for Melvin. Not only was he mangled and meaningless, but now he was matchless. Melvin sat by himself, feeling very melancholy. Until a hand picked him up and he heard the master cry, It's my missing sock! Melvin could hardly believe the joy in his voice. What happened to the matching one, dear? The master asked the mistress. I've been using it as a dusting rag, the mistress answered. Poor Marvin, Melvin thought mournfully. Did they turn him into a dusting rag just because I left? He then realized that he had made Marvin meaningless. After all, what good is a sock without its match? And now that Melvin was full of holes, both he and Marvin would be good for nothing but dusting rags. But the master wasn't finished. Will you mend this for me, dear? He asked the mistress. Melvin was mystified. The mistress carefully stitched Melvin back together, closing up the holes. Then she found Marvin and folded them together again, placing them back in the dresser. Melvin had never been so delighted to see everyone in the middle drawer. He told Marvin how sorry he was for leaving, and Marvin forgave him. Melvin also told everyone how misled he had been. Life outside the drawer isn't any more marvelous, he explained. We're all socks here. If we leave our master and we leave our match, we lose our meaning. Having learned this, Melvin was glad to be worn again like he was made to be. After all, he was not a chew toy. He was not a puppet. He was not a dusting rag. He was a size medium sock, perfect for the master's feet. He was a mid-rise sock, able to be worn with most outfits. He was a moderately worn sock, always ready in time for Mondays. And now, after all of his mishaps, he was a mended sock. And he would never again go missing. The end. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that. If you want to order a copy of Melvin, 
go ahead and swing by my website at inquisitiveinkpot.com. You can also order it right off of Amazon. Just search The Misadventures of Melvin the Missing Sock. And I really hope you enjoyed this. Thanks again. Feel free to subscribe, drop any comments in the section below, and I will talk with you again soon.